So the other day I posted a tweet about the iPad finally being a computer now that Apple re-added extended monitor support for certain iPads. So in this video, what I wanted to do is go over that extended monitor support. I wanna talk about all the good that comes with it because it does really change again what the iPad can be to certain people. First we have the iPad Pro, then iPad OS finally breaking away from iOS made it a completely different experience. Then we got the Magic Keyboard, which turned into a two-in-one, a tablet and a laptop. Then we got cursor support, then stage manager, and now finally extended monitor support to finally kind of bring this all together to make the iPad an actual computer replacement and not just a supplemental device for a MacBook computer in your workflow. So let's talk about everything you need to know about extended monitor support, all the good and some of the bad that comes with that. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, everyone, I wanna get right into this video. This is gonna be a nice walkthrough and explainer video of all the nuance differences, all the new features, all the UI differences that come with Stage Manager. So just to preface everything, for Stage Manager and for specifically extended monitor support, you will need an M series powered iPad. So that includes the iPad Air M1, that includes the 11 and 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro, as well as the M2 iPad Pro in both size variants. If you have a 2018 or 2020 iPad Pro, you will only be able to use Stage Manager on device. And then when you do plug into an external monitor, you will get the classic mirror display. Still be able to use Stage Manager, it'll just be mirrored with the letterbox as we've seen you know, for the past five, six years with an iPad. But let's get started guys. So I am using a 27 inch 4K monitor. Apple does recommend to go 4K. And I wanted to plug this in real time just to show you guys what it looks like and what the situation is like. So you can see that now it's charging. You see I get external display, that little icon down there that popped up. You give it a second to populate the screen and ideally it should come up. And there we go. We now have the extended monitor running on the actual display. We had the iPad running whatever is on the iPad itself. And you can see that the only thing that gets brought over to the extended monitor is the actual dock itself. Everything else stays on the main display. So I am using a combination of my mouse right here just to give you guys an idea of what's going on. And then it also obviously works with the trackpad itself. Now, in order to get this to work functionally, you will need either the actual Magic Keyboard right here, or you need to at least have a Bluetooth connection to a mouse or a keyboard in order for this to happen. If you are not connected via mouse or keyboard, then it's just gonna mirror the display, even if you do have an M1 or M2 iPad Pro. So another thing that I do wanna bring up is that for the actual extended monitor right here, this will only be in stage manager mode. So you cannot have the classic split view. So for instance, for split view, if you open up notes right here, you can press the three dots to then go into split view. And let's say I wanna open up another notes application, then this is the classic split view that you see on the iPad itself. This is not possible on the main display. So if you go up here, and let's say I wanna open up the notes application, then it's gonna open up the notes that I had on the bottom display, and it's gonna open them in stage manager view or floating window view on the actual extended monitor. So first let's go into the settings and see exactly what kind of settings we're dealing with when it comes to the extended display. So if we go into display, go into your displays down here, you do have a couple options down here. So you can actually do an arrangement, so arrange it however you see fit, just like any other one. You have some options to go into your built-in retina display, and then you have some options on the actual display itself depending on what display you're using. So this one, I have the ability to go HDR or SDR. We can display zoom and then always display mode changes. So again, I do think that using a studio display will probably work the best when working in this extended monitor view, but again, that's $1,600. I do recommend going with 4K because that's what Apple does recommend for scaling and sizing, but I'm sure Apple is going to be able to accommodate all different shapes and sizes of displays, or at least hopefully they will, and just know that they do work. There'll just probably be some nuances depending on what display you're using. But from a setting standpoint, that's all you really get. You get to basically change the arrangement and then change whether you have SDR or HDR depending on your display. So now that we have that out of the way, let's start opening up some apps on the actual extended display. So if I click on Twitter, you can see that it does take up a lot of the display, but you can easily resize it. You can change it to, again, this iPhone mode, you can change it into iPad mode, or you can even go all the way to full screen if you would like and take up the entire display, which is very cool. Shout out my man Felipe from nine to five, but you can see that Twitter is taking up the entire display and then I can still go down here and use my display on the actual iPad itself. And then to make it smaller again, all you do is you go into one of the corners and start to resize it. Now, as you can see on the bottom right here, the dock actually disappears. The dock does disappear whenever a single application is open, but to pull it up, you just kind of go to either the right or the left of the display itself, pull down, and then all of them open up again. So if I want to open up Safari, if you just click on Safari, it's going to move Twitter to the actual app shelf, but if you long press and drag it onto there, then it will actually open them together. So just to show you, if I just 
tap on Safari, it moves Twitter over here to the app shelf. And then if I go back down here and if I wanna grab a new Safari window, I just go like this and then it opens it up together. So some of the little nuances that you learn as you're using it. And then you also have the ability to go to your app shelf, grab Twitter and move it into your, you know, your floating window situation. So you can have up to four different windows or applications open, depending on what app you're using. Some apps support multiple instances of the same application. Obviously something like Safari allows you to just grab this right here, move it over, and now you have three Safari windows open. You can see that it, that's, it works intuitively depending on what app you're using, and it's very familiar. And the more and more that you use it, the more your efficiency will gain and the more your flow will pick up on exactly what Apple wants you to do on exactly the Apple way of doing multitasking on the iPad. And I would say that 99% of apps support this. There's some applications which still do not support kind of going full screen, which we'll touch on in a little bit, but you can see that it works extremely well, right? And every single application when you open it does have these three dots up here and it gives you a couple options. So if I click on the three dots, you can enter into full screen mode, which we've shown you already. And then from full screen mode, you can't actually undo the full screen mode from there. You have to go into the corner and resize it. So that's one thing to take note of. I wish Apple would kind of change that, maybe add it into here. But if you go back in here, you can actually add another window. So you can see it asks me, what do I want to add? Do I want to add something from the app shelf that was there earlier? Or do I want to grab something like LumaFusion and open it up with Safari? So it kind of works the same way as it did down here with the split screen, but just another option. You also have in the three dots, you have the ability to minimize it. So you literally minimize it and it goes into the app shelf. So if I want to bring this back, bring it back. And then two more that I have is you can move it to the iPad, but you can see quickly moved it to the iPad. Or finally, you can close it, which actually completely deletes that instance of Safari. It doesn't get rid of all the Safaris. As you can see, we still have a couple over here. It just gets rid of that certain instance. So now let's talk about some user interface kind of situations, right? So first off, as you guys saw earlier, if I do do my multitasking down here, the reason it's opening up side by side is because I'm still not in stage manager mode. So if I do want to go into stage manager mode on the actual iPad display, all I have to do is click on the stage manager button and then my floating windows also populate down here, which allows you to actually now click and drag any window that you have down here. I can actually drag it into the main display up top or that extended display, which is something that could not be done when it was originally released with iPadOS 16.0 and 16.1. You can see that it does work in that fashion now, which is beautiful to see. And I can just continue to drag other windows over here, which is great. Some other things to take note of is, let's say if you're used to a Mac OS setup or a desktop setup and you have something with a scroll wheel, right? So you have a mouse that uses a scroll wheel and use it all the time. Whenever you hover your mouse over a certain application, so here you can see that this is the one that's visible to everybody. So the scroll wheel works perfectly fine. I'm scrolling up and down, but let's say there's an app in the background. Technically Twitter is in the background. I'm not gonna click on Twitter, but I'm gonna scroll on Twitter. So you can still scroll on Twitter and passively be able to view things, which is great. So it's very similar to a desktop experience, which I love. And then personally, one thing that I actually have been using all the time, and this is now what I do to edit my videos, is so for LumaFusion, which I use on a daily basis to edit these videos, I'm now able to have a larger screen. So if I grab this and full screen it, I now can work with my entire screen. I can move this around and customize how big my viewfinder is. I can actually look at all the rows that I have on there. You know, I can look at all my settings, go into whatever files I need. So I absolutely love that. And then if I wanna move it to the iPad, I can do that as well. And you can see it moves to the iPad perfectly. And the iPad does have also its own version of the app shelf. It has a dock down here, which is beautiful to see. Some other simple things that you know you would think are just by design there, but you always wanna test out, are can you actually copy and paste stuff and move it around from app to app? So let's pull up the notes application right here. We'll move it into here. We'll start up a new note. So let's see if my actual hotkeys work. So I'm down here, if I wanna grab this, maybe control C, go over here. Can I actually paste it? Of course I can. So if you wanna click and drag, you can even right click, I can copy. So I'm using my mouse for everything here. You know, press enter, enter, right click, paste. And then there is the entire Mac article that I was reading before. And now I'm pasting it on for some notes that I'm taking for whatever, for an essay or whatever the case may be. So your hotkeys and being able to use a mouse. So like I, now I highly recommend the ability to use a mouse. This one's by Logitech. This is Logitech Anywhere S2. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. It's my favorite mouse and I've had it for over three, maybe even four years now at this point. But again, it's just cool how the iPad has come such a long way. And you can see that you can resize it and it seems like Apple has some predetermined sizes for these windows. So there is a certain amount of customization where you can resize it to whatever you see fit, but you can see that the things move around it as well. So there's still a level of inertia, very similar to how whenever you move applications on the home screen itself, if you move one application on the home screen, then everything kind of changes up because it's still staying in its own grid. 
this kind of has the feeling of a more variable grid. So you're still kind of following some sort of rule and you'll get used to it as you go along. There's no, you know, how big they get. And you can see, for instance, on Twitter, right? This is a, a great example. Right now, I consider this the iPhone view of Twitter. And then if I move it a little bit bigger, you get that sidebar, which is the view of an iPad application version of Twitter. And if I go full screen, you can see that it still stays in that iPad view. So all things to consider when kind of playing around. But I do recommend kind of going in and playing around with them. And in terms of limitations, you get up to four different applications up on the screen at one time. So for instance, if I wanted to grab something like YouTube, drag it into here, it'll drag it into here, but then it'll kick your farthest used app over to the app shelf. So you can see that this Safari window was probably the fifth app that I used. So it's gonna kick it off to there and it'll continue to do that with every application that you open. So let's say I wanna open up Maps, move it over here, it's gonna kick another one over there. So you can have up to four applications working at one time on the main screen, and then each shelf can have four applications working as well. And I can grab this, move it back over here, and then it's gonna kick something else into that shelf. Then I can start switching shelves, move this over here. So I can have multiple instances. So let's say there's like a group of four applications that I use together for let's say creative tasks, another four applications for productivity to communicate with my team, another four for leisure. And I can just group those all together and have access to them ready to go. So another quick thing that I do wanna show off is exactly how multitasking works with all this. So normally multitasking, let's go onto the iPad screen now, you know, hold three fingers and go up. You can see that multitasking still kind of works the same, but the multitasking is a little bit broken in a good way in terms of like multitasking now refers to multitasking on the iPad and then multitasking on the secondary display. So if I use those same three fingers and scroll up for multitasking, you can see that now I'm multitasking not only with the applications, but also with the different instances of the shelves. And to quit out of them is the same way. You can quit out of each one individually. So if you can see, if I hover over each one, they kind of get a little bit bigger. So you're doing them one by one. So you can see I got rid of notes, I got rid of Twitter, I'm getting rid of maps, and now all those applications are gone and it's an empty screen on the extended monitor. So that is what we're dealing with from a multitasking perspective. It's very familiar, very easy to use, and it's again, very intuitive. Okay, so now let's talk about some smaller details that people have had questions about pretty actively on Twitter. So if you guys do wanna follow me on Twitter, it'll be right here if you guys wanna see some updates as this goes live. But what I wanna show off is, can you have two audio sources playing at once, which has been one big detriment about iOS and iPadOS for a while. So, so basically, if I open up this video by nine to five Google, it is playing, let's skip the ad, we'll let it start playing. I'm gonna resize it a little bit so that you can have the video, you can see it's playing. But then the second I actually open up, let's say something from YouTube TV, as you can see, it pauses that video. So can you have two audio sources going at once? No, you cannot. So if you're somebody that likes to maybe edit your own video while having background music, you know, instrumentals going on in the background, then sadly you won't be able to do that because again, if I even grab, let's say something like LumaFusion, so now I have three video apps going at the same time, you can see that the YouTube TV app is still going, but the second I press play here, it's gonna pause that YouTube video and then start moving LumaFusion and start actively playing that. And then continuing on that same topic of audio source. So not only can you not have two audio sources playing at once, but also, as you can see, I am connected via USB-C slash Thunderbolt, right? I'm connected directly into the monitor. So basically, when it comes to audio coming out of your iPad, there is no way to default to using your iPad speakers whenever you are connected via either HDMI or USB-C or whatever the case may be. So you have to make sure either A, that your monitor has built-in speakers because it's gonna to default to those speakers or B, use some sort of Bluetooth speaker in order to get some actual audio coming out of your device. So I have both, so there is, so my monitor does have, you know, very tinny speakers, but they are speakers. And then I also have my Marshall Bluetooth speaker behind there, as you guys can see, to actually get audio out. Or for the most part, whenever I am editing a video, I just use my AirPods Pro and then I'm good to go. But just so you guys know, sadly, as of right now, and I hope Apple changes that, if you do wanna use your iPad speakers, which are amazing speakers in their own right, while using the extended monitor, it's now impossible. And then lastly, what I do wanna to touch on is gaming, everybody. So you guys always wanna know about gaming, wanna know what it's like. So here we have Apple Arcade. And just so you know, you can still use your Xbox controller, your PlayStation controller, whatever the case may be. So here I have NBA 2K. It's, you know, it's an Apple Arcade game. We'll press continue on here. Obviously you can see that I am in stage manager mode right now on the iPad. So first off, if I wanna full screen it down here, obviously you can full screen it here. But what I do wanna show you is if I press this, move it to the top display, can you full screen it on the top display? At least for NBA 2K, you can't do it. So maybe each game is a little bit different, but you can see that if I try to make it any bigger, it just reverts back to the size that it wants to go to. Another game that I have down here is Call of Duty. So this is not an Apple Arcade game, but it is an App Store game. So you can see that it, again, it opens up down here. If I want to full screen it here, obviously I can do that. But if I want to move it over to the display over here, 
which is cool. I can actually have two games running at the same time. So again, iPad is an extremely powerful device, which is kind of crazy to think about. But let's move this back over to the app shelf. So if I want to full screen this one, make it bigger, make it bigger. It doesn't let me. It goes back to that. So it looks like most games, if not every single game that you download from the app store will default to like this size view. So to each their own, I do wish I could full screen game on that secondary display. But as of right now, the only way to go full screen is to play it directly on the iPad itself. And just to let you guys know, if you don't have a USB-C or Thunderbolt enabled monitor, and let's say you have a VGA or an HDMI one, then you'll be totally fine as long as you have the correct dongle. So if you have an older display that just uses HDMI, get yourself a little dongle like this one, plug it into your iPad, and then you'll be able to do the same exact thing with zero issues whatsoever, because you shouldn't need to have an $800 or $1,000 display in order to enjoy extended monitor support. So if you get yourself a $50, $100, $150 display, you'll still be more than fine. And then one of the last things I did want to touch on, which is kind of an interesting use case, is the camera. What happens to the camera app when using extended monitor support? So I'm gonna open the camera up down here, you can see that it still works on the actual display itself. So hello, hello, we're waving. But let's say if I move this up to this secondary display. It looks like it still works. So it's still using the camera from the iPad, but it's now displaying it on that secondary display, as you guys can see, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So let's do one more test and it's going to be an actual Zoom slash Google Meets meeting. I'm curious to know exactly what happens in that situation and this will be a live test. So the final thing I do want to test out is how a video conferencing call works on the iPad. So you can see we have Google Meet open right here. It is using the webcam from the iPad, even though I do have a webcam technically connected to the iPad via the monitor itself up there, as you can see, it's still defaulting to the actual iPad webcam, which I'm totally okay with. So now if I press join, you can see that the camera is still working. So now, as you can see, I entered with my phone. So we are video chatting, but now let's see what happens if I move it to the upper display. So if I move it to the top display, Will the camera still work? And lo and behold, it still works. Now over here, it looks like I am in landscape mode for some reason, probably just a bug that they have to fix, but I can full screen this all the way. And then there is it, there it is. It fixes into the correct horizontal way. And now we're video chatting on the iPad on a secondary display, which is extremely cool. But those are all the little nuanced things that I wanted to walk everybody through. I know this was a little bit of a long video, but let's get out of this view, finish up the video, and let me know you guys' overall thoughts in the comments down below. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, extended monitor support is very, very stable. And if this is any indication of what the experience is gonna be like for the entire public with their iPads, then this is definitely gonna be a very welcome upgrade and new update and feature set for your iPad. And again, in my opinion, in my personal workflow, the iPad is more than enough to get both your productivity tasks, your creative tasks, and all your leisure stuff done in the same exact device. I would definitely recommend getting a nice spec when it comes to storage space and not going with the baseline model if it's gonna be your main computer. But outside of that, this thing is going to be powerful enough. It's gonna be able to handle everything that you need to depending on your specific workflow. And I just wanna reiterate that extended monitor support and stage manager are not the same thing. Stage manager is coming to all iPad Pros with the new design. So basically 2018, 2020, the M1 and the M2 iPad Pro, and then extended monitor support is only for the M series iPad. So you can only use it on the iPad Air M1, the M1 iPad Pro, and the M2 iPad Pro. So keep that in mind when trying to make your iPad your main computer. For instance, if you have a 2020 A12Z iPad Pro, that will give you stage manager and a lot of the functionality that I mentioned, but it just won't be able to extend to an external monitor. The only thing that it's gonna do is mirror your display just like the classic iPads. But that is gonna do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and also leave a comment down below. If you guys do have those M series iPads, is the iPad now a computer to you? Is that enough for you to be able to do all of your work tasks? I know there's probably some nuanced things and some use cases where the iPad still is not enough for some people. I'm thinking like very intense Excel users, a lot of people using some specific software for 3D renders and gaming and things like that. But outside of that, for somebody like myself, who just uses the Microsoft Suite, uses Slack, uses iMessage, uses email, creates thumbnails in Affinity Photo, edits videos in LumaFusion, and likes to play the occasional 2K game in our Apple Arcade, then guys, for me, the iPad is officially a computer. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you guys wanna watch more iPadOS, iOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.